Article 20, Personal Mobility. This article begins with one comment highlighted in a panel. Have an understanding that we need to be able to get out and socialize, not be stuck at home by ourselves. So the priority would be to make it easier for transport, such as making mobility taxis free and being able to stay with you until you are finished, if you have a day of several stops to make. Trips that are short stops currently require booking a taxi, then waiting around to be picked up, taken to next stop, dropped off, then waiting to be picked up again, etc., making for a very long, tiring day so then it becomes easier to do everything online and become isolated. Survey Respondent Introduction This article states that people with disabilities have the right to move about their communities and be independent and that governments have an obligation to help them to do so. General Comment Disabled New Zealanders continue to experience frustration in relation to exercising the right to personal mobility, in particular the differences between the equipment, vehicles and modifications available from ACC compared to Ministry of Health funded supports. Importance of Article 20 to Disabled People in New Zealand Personal mobility is vital to disabled people's ability to live safely in their own homes, study, work and participate in the community. Therefore, this article is viewed as highly important. Current place of Article 20 in New Zealand law and practice. Funding for personal mobility aids and training is divided in New Zealand into two groups. Those who are eligible for support under the Accident Compensation Act 2001 and those whose funding is covered by the Ministry of Health and District Health Boards. The Government has included references to accessibility of public transport and alternative transport options for disabled people in its policy statement on land transport issued in 2018, end note 166. Some local authorities also include specific reference to access for people with disabilities, such as Auckland's Transport Alignment Project 2018, end note 167. As noted in Article 9, there have been some improvements in the area of public transport. However, disabled public transport users continue to experience challenges on their journeys. Committee's previous dialogue with the State on Article 20. The Government was asked to comment on measures taken to facilitate personal mobility and to ensure equity of provision regardless of the cause of impairment. The response included details of Ministry of Health funding for equipment, housing modifications and vehicle purchase or modification and acknowledged the differences in funding between ACC and the Ministry of Health. Comment on the realization of Article 20 in New Zealand. Inaccessible housing, lack of access to personal mobility aids, inaccessible public transport and unaffordable transport alternatives are some of the greatest barriers to personal mobility for disabled people. Many people report significant challenges in accessing support to make essential housing modifications to enable them to move safely around their own homes. People relying on Ministry of Health funding report longer delays for modifications and less access to funding for modifications, which can mean they're living in unsuitable or unmodified homes. The funding inequity extends to mobility training and access to equipment, with Ministry of Health clients reporting being on longer wait lists, receiving less funding and being offered fewer equipment choices and cheaper equipment options than ACC clients. Ministry of Health clients who are in work or training tend to be prioritized for funding, which means that many disabled people are on long wait lists for equipment. The relatively small size of the New Zealand market limits the availability of equipment and provides few incentives for developers, although there are some individual examples of innovative equipment being designed in New Zealand. End note 168. One example is the Omeo technology hands-free wheelchair, which uses body motion to allow the user to control and maneuver the wheelchair. End note 169. Recommendations. The IMM recommends that the government 57. 
urgently review and extend investment in subsidised taxi and other travel schemes for disabled people unable to access public transports so they can secure consistent and transferable 24-7 access to a range of transport options nationwide. 58. Urge local government to embed accessibility requirements within its procurement processes for public transport to ensure that disabled people have equitable access to public transport. 59. Require that all taxi fleets must have all or at least a substantial proportion of vehicles that are wheelchair accessible and ensure those vehicles are available in proportion to the general fleet. 60. Set expectation and implementation targets for territorial authorities to ensure that their roads, transport infrastructure and pedestrian routes are constructed, retrofitted and maintained to meet accessibility standards. 61. Equalise the funding for mobility training and equipment for all disabled people, regardless of the cause of impairment, thus removing the difference between Ministry of Health and Accident Compensation Corporation, ACC, clients. 62. Provide additional investment into research and development of mobility aids and to develop or import innovative mobility aids.